Have you ever wondered how to make a large component on a small hobby level CNC router? In this video we will make this oddly shaped component on our CNC using a cutting approach called tiling. And show you how we created the CNC programs using Fusion 360 so you can replicate the process when working on your project. So we have this large component that we have to make on our CNC router. But the problem is it can't fit entirely on our CNC's work surface and we can't cut the part in one go. Therefore, we have to use the tiling approach. The idea of this approach is simple. You just divide the project you are trying to make into multiple tiles that are the same or smaller size than your CNC's work surface. Then you would load your material on the CNC router, cut the first tile, slide the material further, cut the next tile and so on until your component is complete. It's a great way to maximize your CNC's potential and it's not that difficult to set up. So let's get started. The first step as always is creating the stock material. So I make a new component and draw a rectangle the same size as the material I will use for the part. Since we will make the part in multiple cuts, we need a way to position the material on the CNC router to ensure the best quality component. For that I usually use wooden dowels. The idea is simple. We cut positioning holes in the spoil board that we can use when aligning the material for the tiling operations. The most important thing about the positioning holes is that they need to be in the same coordinates for all the tiles. So I usually draw a construction line on both sides of the stock material. On these lines I will place the positioning doubles for all the tiles. When the placement of the holes for the spoil board is specified, we can draw the construction lines for the tiles and specify the sizes of each tile. The tile has to be smaller than your CNC's work area. When the tile sizes are specified, we can add positioning holes to each tile on both sides of the material. To ensure the holes are at the same position for all the tiles, I draw the circles on the construction lines we made earlier and add the same 30mm distance between the center of the double holes and the x-axis. After the positioning holes were in place, we have to make these little cuts in the stock material. They will be useful when specifying the origin point for the second and the third tile. Anyway, when that is done, we can extrude the sketch. I'm making the stock the same thickness as the material we are using for the part. Now we can align the material stock and the component to see if we have to adjust the tile sizes. To make it easier to see where each tile starts and ends, I add construction lines to the material stock where the x-axis for each tile would be. We can see there is a cutout that is in the middle between the second and the third tile. It's not a big problem, but to avoid complications when creating the toolpath, I decided to change the size of the second tile so all the cutout holes would fit within one tile. When that looks good, we can continue adding the stock contour lines. These will limit the CNC movement within each tile. I usually make the stock contour smaller than the material stock and slightly bigger than the component. To better organize the stock contour lines, I add vertical construction lines and place a rectangle for each tile. The rectangles must overlap with each other a little bit. That will ensure we cut all of the component's contour line. Anyway, after the stock contour sketch is done, we can switch to the manufacturer section of Fusion. The first operation when making parts with the tiling approach is creating the positioning holes in the spoil board for the doubles. So as the first step, we have to create a new setup and select the bottom left corner of our material stock as the origin point. Then we can create a new toolpath for the positioning holes. I will quickly hide the stock contour sketch so it's less confusing. Since this time I'm planning to use 8mm doubles, I'm selecting the 2D contour operation. Picking a router bit from my tool library, selecting the double holes at the bottom of the stock and specifying other settings for the cuts. To ensure the doubles fit tight in the spoil board, I leave 0.1mm radial stock and a 3mm axial stock so I don't cut through my spoil board. In this case the depth of the positioning holes will be 9mm. However, I recommend making the positioning holes a little bit deeper. Anyway, after modifying the lead-in settings, the first CNC operation is ready. To make it easier to track which operation belongs to which tile and what each cut does, 
I strongly recommend naming the operations accordingly. It will simplify things when exporting the programs for your CNC router. Now when we have the programs for the positioning holes ready, we can make one for the first tile. As the first operation for each tile, I recommend making the positioning holes for further operations. So we create a new operation and select the control lines of the positioning holes at the bottom of the second tile. Then we can add the necessary settings to the cut. I won't go deep into the specific cut settings I'm using right now, but the most important thing for the positioning hole cuts is that they go all the way through the material. Again, to keep the track of each operation, I renamed the one we just made as tile 1. After that we can do the operations as usual, first cutting the pockets and holes inside of the part and then doing the component contour cut. The only difference is that when creating the operation for the contour cut, we have to select the stock contour we made earlier. This will limit how far the CNC moves when doing the contour line cut. Also I recommend using the support tabs to ensure the part stays attached to the rest of the material when moving the workpiece to the next tile. In my case I'm doing the contour cuts in one pass and the router bit leaves enough shavings in the cutting group and I'm confident the workpiece will stay in place between and during the tiling operations. Anyway, after creating and renaming the operations for the first tile, we can make a new setup for the second tile. So we can select the stock material and specify the origin point then we can create new operations as before, starting with the positioning holes for the third tile, then making the hole and joinery cuts inside the component and finishing with component contour line. Of course again selecting the stock contour that limits the CNC when making the components contour cuts. For some reason now and then when creating new toolpaths for tiling, the tool lead-in glitches. Often the lead-in appears to be unreasonably long which is annoying. Till now I haven't figured out the cause of it, but I have found two solutions. <laughs> Not using the lead-in at all, or moving the stock contour as close to the component as possible. Anyway, after we have created and named all the operations for the second tile, we can go through the same steps for the third. Again, making a new setup, selecting the origin point for the third tile, and creating the CNC toolpath. Since this is our last tile for the part, we don't have to make the positioning holes anymore and we can create only operations for the cutouts and the component contour line. After all the necessary CNC operations are created, we can watch the simulations for each tile, ensuring everything goes well during the CNC cutting. And if everything works fine, we can start exporting the G-code for the CNC. First we have to create a separate program for the positioning holes we will cut in the waste board. And then we can create a separate programs for each tile. To avoid doing the tile cuts in the wrong order, naming them in an easy to understand manner is critical. Now the hard part is over and we can go to the workshop, start the CNC and start working on the large component. So the first things first, we have to calibrate the z-axis for the positioning hole operation. In my case I just put the touch probe on the spoil board and watch the CNC do the rest. After, we can select the positioning dowel program and make the cuts. When the dowel holes are ready, we can load the material on the CNC router. Since our plywood sheet is quite long, I rest one end of it on the soft horse. When the material is positioned and secured to the CNC table, we have to reprobe the z-axis. Then we can select the operation for the first tile and watch the CNC do its work, starting with the positioning holes, continuing with the holes and the joint mortises, and finishing with outside contour cuts. And shortly, the first tile is complete, and we can move on to the next one. So after removing the screws from the workpiece, we can slide the sheet further, align the positioning holes to the ones we made in the spoil board, and position the workpiece using the dowels. When both of the positioning dowels are in place, we can secure the sheet, select the second tiling operation and watch the CNC do the operations. The only thing that you might want to consider before starting the second tiling operation is the length of the dowels that are sticking out from the workpiece. If your CNC is doing the cuts close to the positioning dowels, I recommend cutting them shorter to avoid unnecessary collisions. Anyway, when the cuts are complete, we can remove the screws from the workpiece, pull out the dowels, and slide the workpiece further. To support the material and ensure the last tile is cut with precision, I'm using the saw horses again. Then we can use the dowels and the positioning holes to prepare the part for the final CNC operations. And after securing the material in place, we can select the operations for the third tile 
and watch the CNC make the final cuts. A couple of moments later we have successfully made a part that is way bigger than our CNC router's work surface. The best part, it's almost impossible to locate where the tiling operations overlap. I hope this video helps in making some of your next projects. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.